Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Coffee with Katie. I have my Blood Forest mug from Fable Brown's Coffee based on her book, A Loss for Blood. I love Stonewall mugs. My husband's a little bit of a psychopath and he likes room temperature lukewarm coffee or cold coffee, but he doesn't like hot, fresh coffee. And I think that's just insane. And he even says, I cannot use Stoneware mugs because they keep my coffee too hot for too long. And that's why I'm a believer in them. I love them very much. Because when I don't have my Ember mug, I'm not using it every second of every day, which is also the best gift I've ever received, probably. Um, Stoneware mugs is where it's at. So today's video is going to be my October reading wrap up. We have several books to go through, so it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's just get started. First one we will talk about is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Maher. I read this, well, I listened to this, but I read this in October. I think I'm on the opposite side of the reviews. A lot of the reviews are saying people don't like it. They thought it was just fine. They thought it wasn't very good. They thought it was like bad writing. It's her first book, I believe. Um, a lot of people weren't about it. I loved it. I really did. A lot of people were just like, oh, you just liked it or wanted to read it because it was Red Tower Books. And it's like, well, maybe, but no because this story sounded amazing to me and it was exactly what I wanted, but I think people did not want that. So let me explain. I think this book was really, really fun and funny. You feel left out? You feel like you're not a part of this party? Could you not step on my books as a stepping stool, sir? So this book was really funny and fun. Legend is right here. So if you see him, I'm just having to appease him for a second and pet him. Um, but I think a lot of people may maybe thought they were getting like a dark romance with fantasy elements and he's the villain. Sir! <laughs> this is my life. So maybe people thought they were getting like a dark villain romance where it's really like twisted and you know dark romance genre type things where it's like questionable, morally gray, like all that stuff. But that's not really what this book is. Like it is a villain <laughs> There is a, I guess, villain romance, as in there's a villain and the main character starts to become interested in him. But it's a really funny, lighthearted, possibly like cozy fantasy vibes. I'd say cozy at times, yet there are still um, villainous and creepy elements. I really loved this book and was really unsure with what some of the criticisms are trying to get at because I don't, I don't think you understood the point of the book or you didn't understand what the book was going to be and that's why you're mad about it. Maybe not. Maybe you didn't like the writing. It is kind of different. It's a different vibe. It's a different way of, of talking in the book, but I really, <laughs> but I really liked it and thought it worked. I thought it was really funny and cute and hilarious but you're still following a villain so she'll walk into work and be like oh no who upset him there's heads hanging from the ceiling so it's not just like it's a super fluffy book completely even though the way everything is handled is very humorously there's still kind of like a a mystery element to it and honestly this book was exactly what i wanted it to be so i feel like maybe people had different expectations than i did going into this book um to kind of tell you a tiny synopsis of what this is about. Basically, you're following a woman who is trying to support her family because her dad is sick and she ends up getting a job from the villain of this like medieval society who's trying to take down the king. And while she's working for him, she finds out that somebody's trying to take the villain down and she's kind of trying to figure out who it is and she also kind of starts falling for the villain. And it was very, like I said, lighthearted, funny, hilarious. Um, sinister elements in the sense that you're still following a villain who is like trying to do villainous things um the way i kind of break it down is it was really humorous it was a slow burn like a really really slow burn there is no spice in this and a touch of mystery and i think people don't like that it's not spicy i think they wanted it to be spicy but it's not it's not a dark villain romance it's not spicy and i think that's why people were upset about it I loved that it was all of those things. I loved that it wasn't dark, a dark romance. I loved that it wasn't spicy and it's like a super slow burn situation. I loved the humorous elements. The little frog in the book, hilarious. Like all of it was just such a good time and really funny and I loved it so much. But you also have the villain that's like the who did this to you type thing, type of a trope, I guess. And 
I went to the I went into it with the expectation that it would be kind of light and funny and it mostly was and I adored it. I was also happy to see that this is going to be a trilogy and I will continue it because the way the story left off I was like excuse me. Um, so I did think it was really good. Um, it is a very different vibe so I did give it four stars but I think if it sounds like something you will enjoy and you're okay with no spice and it just being a very I guess eccentric it's like a very different type of a book maybe more whimsical even though that I feel like that's not the best way to say it either it's just kind of a funny story if you're more okay with that and it being no spice super slow burn funny cute kind of cozy almost I think you will really like this but I don't think you should go into it thinking it's gonna be some spicy villain romance because it's not and that's why I loved it so that's that next one I was able to read was the school for good and evil book two a world without princes um and I can't say much about this because it is the second book in the series but essentially you're following these two best friends who end up going to the school for good and evil but one of them thinks they're going to go to the school for good and one of them thinks they're going to go to the school for evil and the and they end up going to the opposite schools they thought they were going to attend and chaos ensues and this is the second book picking up on that story um i still really like this series but i'm sure it'll kind of drone on a little as i'm not sure how the story will keep going so long because there's like seven books or something there's quite a few books so I'm not really sure how they're going to keep the story going, but I still really enjoy it. I think it's just a very fun, dark middle grade. Like, it's just such an interesting vibe. It was a little sad to see the point of the first book kind of get discounted and, like, became obsolete almost. But curious to see how it'll continue and how the plot develops from here. The world is just very interesting. So I did like it. I gave it 3.5 stars, but I'm um, curious to see where the author is going to take it. The next one, <laughs> the next one that I read was um, A Fall of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And I was pretty excited about this book because I was interested to read more of Jennifer L. Armentrout that wasn't from Blood and Ash. I'm not sure if I mentioned it on this channel, but um, I have read the Lux series by her and I really liked it. It was just really fun. And it was a YA series and I just kind of devoured it. And I would say it's not, it's one of those situations where it's, it's not like good literature but it was really fun and I devoured it very quickly like over a few days I think I read the first book in three days which is pretty good for me um when I'm physically reading it not listening to it because I can listen to things faster um, so that was pretty good for me and it was just kind of fun even though I had some issues with some of the plots and whatever so I was excited to see her continue to develop as an author and this is the first book that's not in there from Blood and Ash and so I was like okay I want to give this a shot I probably should have DNF'd this. So while this book was really easy to listen to, there was basically no plot until the end, it felt like, which seems to track with her From Blood and Ash books. I think the first one was fine, but the cliffhanger at the first one made you read the second one, and then I felt like that one kind of droned on for a while. Um, so I feel like she kind of does that. She writes a lot of things happening, but doesn't really expand the plot. She like develops the relationships between the characters to build to the plot, I think. But there's not a lot of plot points and that kind of it's just not my vibe i really like the plot it felt like there was no really real plot until the end and i think that's kind of her mo at this point it's a lot of steam or spice but the plot is few and far between and it works for her and her following loves it so obviously if you are catering to this crowd you could keep doing it like people really enjoy it. But I'm starting to think that it's not for me and that she as an author is not for me anymore unless she kind of starts writing YA or something again, maybe. I'm still planning on continuing the From Blood and Ash series, at least the next one. Um, but I didn't really find myself intrigued or wanting to know more with this particular one. From, from, with From Blood and Ash, I wanted to know more after the cliffhanger at the end of the first book. But, this, with, but with this one, I was just kind of like, you know what? I think I'm good. I think I don't have to continue. And this is the first book in a series called The Awakening Series. Um, but I didn't really feel invested in the story at all and I won't continue the series but I'm glad that I did give this a shot. I probably should have DNF'd it but I'm glad that I like finished it and know my thoughts about it and now I don't really care enough to continue. So a little bit disappointing but that's that. The next one that I read was Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco and I I enjoyed this quite a bit. Um, Envy was a really good character and I also liked Camilla, who's the fem female main character. 
I kind of liked Envy in the Kingdom of the Wicked series. Like, he was okay. I think he get, got a little bit more developed in the second book. And you kind of like him, but he's still kind of a villain and not in a good way in the other books. But people really liked him. It seemed like a lot of people really wanted his perspective and things. And I could see why, but I wasn't, I didn't, I hadn't bought into that yet, right? But reading this book, he's a really good character. It was really interesting to follow his perspective. I really liked reading from his perspective and reading all the stuff that was going on with his court. Like that was really cool. I did really appreciate it. Like, and Camilla, I felt like she wasn't a stupid character. And I felt like she was very calculated and had a lot of reasons for what she was doing. Um, so I liked her as a character. A lot of the time I feel like the female main character could fall flat for me. Depends on the situation, but sometimes that is the case and I don't really care about their perspective, which sounds so horrible. But that can happen depending on the character. Like I like Violet, I liked, ooh, I didn't like Farrah for a while. Um, but you know, when there's like the female main character and then there's the male main character and sometimes whatever. That was a lot of rambling, Never mind. Um, <laughs> I also really loved the beginning of this book because it was kind of similar to Victorian England era. And that was like the setting and then Envy trying to seduce Camilla. And I have kind of gotten into like the Victorian historical romance situations with like a rogue of one's own and stuff like that. And I can really enjoy them because of the culture and the society and the humor and just the way they have to like navigate all of that. I really enjoy. So I was really surprised to find that in this book and I really liked that. But then it shifts to like a game of the underworld as most of these books do. And then it was, and it was spicier than the level of Kingdom of the Wicked. I think this is the first book in a series. I think what she's planning on doing is writing multiple books from a different prince's perspective. So this is like Envy's story. So he doesn't get another one, I don't think. But like, so this book, for it being the first book, like Kingdom of the Wicked was the first book, it was spicier. Um, this is also, I think, new adult or adult, whereas Kingdom of the Wicked was YA, so it makes sense. I didn't mind most of the spice, but I would have liked just a little less. To be the focus you know i think the majority of people will like it i think they will appreciate it but i just in general would like a little bit less i liked the games and i liked the introduction of the fey type creatures we didn't really get that at all in the kingdom of the wicked trilogy so that was cool i like that we're starting to explore more of the creatures realms i guess like we're getting more of those that we've heard about maybe also can't wait for the next book because i'm hoping that pride I think Pride gets his own story and I think he's going to be a super interesting character to write. So I would love it if Pride is the next one. But overall, I was pretty pleasantly surprised with this. I really enjoyed reading about Envy. And I didn't think I was going to. I like went into this thinking I'm going to read it because I've read basically everything she's written at this point. So I'm going to read this and I really liked it. So I gave it four stars. The next one. The next one was technically in my November TBR, but I picked it up early and finished it early, um, is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I already put a full in-depth review on my channel, so I'm not going to go into that at all, but I'm just going to touch on this a little bit to say that this is different. So of the books she's written, especially in this trilogy, this one's very different from the first two, and I think some people are going to really hate that. Some people might still love it because they love the world like I did. I'm just in it for Stephanie Garber and the magical world and the feeling these books give me. But it's different. It's not what you would expect. It does not answer your questions. And it's probably going to go in a different way than you thought it would. That being said, Stephanie Garber's writing transports me to another world. It's very whimsical. It makes me feel so happy and like I'm in a fairy tale. A tragic fairy tale a lot of the times. And I really love it. I just love her writing. It just makes me feel so happy and no other writing really does that for me that I've found so far. So I, I loved it. I gave it five stars, but it's not the same as the other books. So if you're looking for it to be exactly the same, it won't be, but it's still very fun. I still liked it a lot. If you're interested in more of my thoughts, check out my review. I guess I could have been holding up A Curse for True Love this whole time. This is my UK edition. Sorry. <laughs> Next book that I finally finished was... Um, Kingdom of Flame and Fury by Whitney Dean. I have thoughts. I have, I guess they're good thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts, okay? I liked this, but the flow was kind of different than what you usually read. And I think she did that on purpose because she has kind of a different trope at play. 
um it's like the romance happened immediately like immediately then it backtracks so i think she described it as like a reverse slow burn and i can see that so i think she did this on purpose for it to be different and for it to be intriguing um, I wasn't sure how I felt about it at first, but then the longer the story went on, more it kind of won me back over. So at first I was like, man, that was too fast. I don't really like that. Story's fine, but like, where is this going? How are they gonna like not be together, but kind of together and on and off and blah, blah, blah. But like the more the story went on, the more I, the more I liked it. Cause there was a part where I was just getting kind of a lull where I didn't really care for it. But I think about halfway through or over halfway through, after you get past a lot of that stuff, I was, I was intrigued again. So I'm very curious to see how the story will unfold in the next few books. It is kind of hard to see the main character, Raven, making the choices she is with the guys because it's so toxic and harmful, but I'm sure there are more plot points later on that make sense, but there's kind of like a, what are you doing situation? But I think she's building to a really cool story and I really liked the story, um, like I said, overall. So I'm curious to see what else she does. I believe these covers are no longer... I believe she doesn't own these covers anymore or she's not selling these covers anymore. You can look into her situation about that that I've kind of mentioned in my previous video. I will continue the series. I did enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up right away. But I did really enjoy it and you should absolutely go follow Whitney Dean because she's a really cool author. She's got another series coming out that's like dark fairy tale retellings and I'm in for it. The, the first one's going to be like a Cinderella retelling. I'm very excited about that series. Um, and I gave that book 3.5 stars. The next one that I read was kind of a surprise because I think I read this over the course of two days. So I had a very short amount of time to finish this, but I did. And that was Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This came up on my Libby app that my hold was available. And so I went ahead and got it and hoped that I could finish it. And I did. So I've heard people, this is the UK edition, by the way. I've heard people rave about this. I've heard people say nothing but good things about this. Um, I... I understand the hype. I get it. It's very different. It's very heartwarming and cozy, which is what people say. It's a cozy fantasy. But I loved that it was surrounded around coffee and coffee shops because that's very, you know my channel, that's very important to me, but it's also extremely relaxing for me, as it is for a lot of people. So I think that really tugged on people's hearts and minds and made them feel those situations and just really spoke to them. You're following Viv, who, I guess I didn't explain any of these books. Good grief. Sorry, everyone. You're following Viv, who is an orc, and she's a mercenary, but she's tired of that life. She does one more hit, and then she retires and goes to this small river town and opens a coffee shop. But the kicker is that no one there knows what coffee is. It's kind of like a new thing. Like, I think a big city type thing has it, but no one else knows about it. So she's not only opening this loving the product but she's also trying to get other people to buy into it and she slowly makes these friends in the town to help her re to help her buy a shop renovate said shop hire people to run said shop and then market herself and the relationship she builds along the way is really sweet and heartwarming and cute but also she ends up teaming up with um she ends up teaming up with somebody that bakes and so they can serve baked goods at their coffee shop and there's just like the way the story develops is just really sweet and cute and then there's some kind of like a little bit of drama towards the end that is kind of like, oh no, what's gonna happen? But overall, the story was very well done. I also listened to this and I did not know this when I reserved the audiobook from Libby, but the author is the narrator for the book and I really appreciated it. He did a really good job. And the description of the cinnamon rolls in this book. I've never wanted a cinnamon roll so bad in my life. I already have a weakness for them and really like them in the fall and winter. So hearing them described just made me want them immediately. You will crave them. You will be hungry. You will want a cinnamon roll. It's going to be a detriment to your health, but it's very cozy, very fun. Um, very easy to listen to, a really short read. I'd say if you want something, like it says high fantasy, low stakes, good company. That's a very good description. If you want something like that, I would recommend that you pick this up. It was very fun. Um, Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is like the prequel story, I believe, comes out this, it comes out November 7th, I think, which is like a few days from now. So 
pick this up, read it if you have not. It was a good time. I gave it 4.5 stars. Get the hype and then it's such a cute story that revolves around coffee. I enjoyed it. And then right after, I didn't realize this was um, part of the audiobook, was the short story Pages to Fill by Travis Baldry. And I want to say that this is probably the short story. It's like 30 pages, but I did read it. And it's point, it's number 0.5. And I think this is like the inspiration for Bookshops and Bone Dust because it is set in the events before Legends and Lattes. So it seems like one of those things you don't really rate because it's such a small background story. Um, I liked it though. And I, I do wonder and think that this is what inspired the prequel book. And he just kind of was like, you know, I wrote this little story and now I'm going to expand the story into a, like a novel. But I'm curious about it. It's, um, Viv is a mercenary at this point and she gets injured and she has to like take some time off and she's just solving a mystery in a very short amount of time. Um, but it was cute. I gave it like three stars. I, again, I don't feel like this is something you really rate because it's so short. But I do think it kind of teed me up for Bookshops and Bone Dust when it comes out that I can read it and kind of know everything that's going on, you know. That was the last book or story that I read in October. I hope you had a great reading month in October and hopefully you will also have a great one in November and that I will also have one. Please comment down below and let me know your favorite read in October. But as for now, that is it for today's video. Please like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time. Stay safe and caffeinated. Bye.